jumping into Ashes of Creation, the very first choice you are going to want to make is which archetype are you going to play? Everyone has their own unique playstyle, whether that be tanking, healing, shooting a bow and arrow, or freezing the ground with ice abilities. Even in this early state of Alpha 2, this will be all possible as 6 out of the 8 primary archetypes will be playable. Those being the tank, mage, bard, cleric, ranger, and fighter. The ones being absent until next year are the Summoner and the Rogue. Choosing an archetype is just the beginning of your journey. Although not expected to be implemented until next year, Ashes of Creation does have a planned pretty unique take on classes. Well, at the core, a Cleric is always going to be that healer, a Tank is always going to be the one to take the brunt of the damage. What truly defines a class in Ashes of Creation is going to be the combination of the primary and secondary archetypes, which is unlocked around level 25, giving players the possibility of 64 units unique classes. The primary archetype you choose upon character creation is a permanent choice. The secondary archetype unlocked through player progression will augment the primary archetype, changing up the abilities, their appearance, and how they interact with your targets. However, the secondary archetype does not add any new skills to any of the archetypes. It's all about the augments which allow players to customize their playstyle. Keep in mind that everything we know about these archetypes is a work in progress. Intrepid has been working hard through the pre-alpha testing to make sure these archetypes are in a good spot. And while some archetypes have a bit further to go than others, it really is your job as a tester to give that player feedback to help Intrepid shape the future of the game. Most abilities will be unlocked through careful selection in the skill tree. You won't have a hundred different abilities in your spellbook, and Trepid wants you to make thoughtful choices within these trees to cater to your playstyle. Skill points are said to be earned every fraction of a level once fully implemented, which is not quite the case yet in Alpha 2, rather than once per level like in most games. You'll be able to use these points to then gain access to new abilities or upgrade existing ones. The skill tree we see now is suited for the level cap of 35, but everything is subject to change as abilities evolve through testing. The these abilities for each archetype include the mage. As a mage, you will wield a formidable array of spells that bend the very elements to your will. Mastery over these abilities will define your prowess in battle. When you need a direct assault, Unleash Arcane Volley, firing a barrage of 7 Arcane Missiles at your target, each dealing 35% Arcane damage. It's a swift and devastating attack that can quickly turn the tide of battle. For Ball of Lightning, you will summon a large sphere of charged electricity that travels slowly forward, dealing 50% lightning damage to enemies it touches and applying a volatile effect, making them even more susceptible to your lightning-based attacks. When swift movement is essential, well, Blink will be at your disposal, instantly teleport 20 meters in the direction you're moving, allowing you to evade attacks or reposition yourself strategically in the blink of an eye. For area control, Blizzard lets you channel a massive storm around you, bombarding enemies with hail shards. Each shard impacts with 50% ice damage in a small area and applies the frozen effect to chilled targets. Chain lightning is perfect for dealing with groups of enemies. Release a powerful streak of lightning that hits your primary target and chains outwards to up to 5 nearby enemies. Each struck with 175% lightning damage and applying up to 20 stacks of shock to any volatile targets. Cone of Cold unleashes a freezing wind in a cone, dealing 125% ice damage and applying the frozen status effect to chilled targets. It's perfect for controlling and damaging groups of enemies in front of you. When you're using your basic weapon attack and seeking to enhance those attacks, elemental empowerment will be key. Each elemental spell you cast alters your weapon combo finishers to apply burning, chilled, or volatile effects based on the current empowered elements, adding extra damage and utility to your strikes. Fireball is a classic mage spell, hurling a ball of fire towards your target that deals 100% fire damage and applies burning for an additional 75% fire damage. With three charges, you can constantly keep the pressure on your enemies. Frostbolt sends a bolt of frost at your target, delivering 225% ice damage and applying chilled to targets that were attacked, making it a pretty powerful single attack. Charging up your lightning strike allows you to release a bolt of lightning that deals 275% lightning damage based on how long it was charged. This devastating attack also applies up to 20 stacks of shock to any enemy it hits. For area denial, Magma Field creates a boiling pool of lava at a target location, dealing 30% fire damage and applying burning at a 50% fire damage power every 2 seconds to enemies within. This fiery pool lasts for 8.1 seconds, punishing anyone who dares to enter. 
Prismatic Beam channels a powerful beam attack that periodically deals 30% magic damage with additional effects based on your current elemental empowerment, making it a pretty versatile deadly spell. To protect yourself on the battlefield, Shell surrounds you with a protective magical barrier that absorbs up to 500% magical power before breaking. The shell will last 15 seconds, giving you time to survive that enemy onslaught. And finally, Slumber allows you to incapacitate targets around you, putting them to sleep for 10 seconds, taking them out of the fight and giving you a strategic advantage. The Ranger Airstrike is your signature move for both offensive and mobility. With a powerful leap forward into the air, you fire three projectiles in a line along your path. Each projectile deals area damage and roots any target hit for three seconds with nature-based magic. Barrage is your go-to for relentless damage. For 1.5 seconds, you unleash a continuous stream of arrows at your target, dealing 12% physical damage. You can also set strategic traps with Bear Trap, which you place at a target location. After a brief delay, the trap will arm itself, and when an enemy triggers it, they will suffer damage and become rooted for two seconds, halting their advances and giving you a tactical advantage. As a ranger, you could activate Call of the Wild to shed all movement impairing effects and gain 20% increase in movement speed for eight seconds. This will be a crucial PvP ability that allows you to bypass snares and roots, giving you the freedom to reposition yourself and escape with ease. With camouflage, you blend into your surroundings, making yourself harder to see and avoiding direct targeting. The far the further you are from an enemy, the more difficult you are to spot. However, this stealth is broken by outgoing combat actions and incoming damage, requiring you to choose your movements wisely. In tight situations, you could use disengage to deliver a swift kick followed by a backflip. This maneuver sends you retreating while snaring any enemy's hit for 4 seconds, keeping them at bay while you regain your footing. Headshot allows you to deliver a devastating blow, dealing 175% physical damage to your target. This powerful attack is ideal for taking down enemies with a single well-placed shot. Hunt for the Bear invokes the Spirit of the Bear, enhancing your physical mitigation. This boon makes you more resilient against damage, bolstering your own defenses in the heat of the battle. Alternatively, you could call upon Hunt of the Raven, which calls forth the Spirit of the Raven, imbuing yourself with increased physical penetration. For increased critical damage, Hunt of the Tiger channels the Spirit of the Tiger, granting you a 10% bonus to your crits. This ability could be crucial when gaining that extra hand, dealing just enough damage to take out your foes. With imbued arrow barbed, you coat your arrow with barbed thorns, inflicting the bleeding status effect on enemies. Each hit applies 3 seconds of bleeding damage over time, with a maximum duration of 30 seconds. Imbue ammo concussive, imbues your ammo with concussive force. Enemies hit by your bow attack suffer 10 stacks of staggered status effect. Increasing trip duration when applied, and lowering their accuracy and evasion stats per stack. Imbued ammo weighted, imbues your ammunition with weight. Enemies hit by your bow attacks suffer the snared status effect, reducing their movement speed by 50%. Each application applies 3 seconds of duration to the target, up to the maximum of 12 seconds. Lightning Reload allows you to fire one ability shot for free, bypassing cooldowns and other costs. This ability ensures that you can continue your assault without interruption. Mark your foes with Mark the Bear to reduce their mitigation by 25%, making them more susceptible to all forms of damage. This mark enhances the effectiveness of your subsequent attack. Attacks. Mark of the Raven calls marked enemies to take bonus damage with each hit. The lower their health, the greater the damage, making it a lethal option for finishing off your weakened targets. Mark of the Tiger increases your critical chance against marked targets by 50%, ensuring that your critical hits are more frequent and impactful. For piercing through enemy lines, when you need to cover an area with damage, Raining Death releases a dense rain of arrows 20 meters ahead, dealing significant damage to all enemies caught with the downpour. The further the targets are from you, the more damage they sustain. Scattershot unleashes a spread of projectiles in a 20 meter cone in front of you, dealing physical damage to every enemy within this range. This wide area attack is ideal for clearing groups of enemies. Snipe is your high impact ability, charging for 3 seconds to unleash a powerful ranged attack that deals 300% physical damage. This is a charged shot and is designed to deliver a massive blow to your target. Thundering Shot sends a lightning infused projectile towards your target, dealing 200% of your physical power as lightning damage. This electrifying attack combines the power of physical and elemental damage for a potent strike. Combat wise, while there was once a minimal safe distance required for shooting arrows, this is no longer the case. You can now fire arrows at any distance, although some abilities may be more effective from afar. While Ashes of Creation
Legion doesn't have weapon restrictions tied to classes, and a Ranger could technically wield a sword, a shield, or a dagger, certain abilities require a bow equipped to function. When equipped and you cast one of these abilities, it will automatically switch weapons for you if the bow isn't in your hand at the time, and you will be able to equip a ranged weapon such as a bow alongside a sword and switch between the two. For Fighter, the abilities we know so far include Battle Cry, unleash a resounding war bellow, applying the riled effects to the caster and nearby party members, and shaken to all nearby enemies. Gain 5 combat momentum for each target that was riled, and riled targets have increased stability and higher chance of tripping shaken enemies. Blitz, charge directly towards your target enemy, dealing physical damage on arrival. Blood Fusion, return 100% of damage dealt as health and 50% of damage dealt as mana over the next 6 seconds. If activated while below 50% health, gain 25% increased damage mitigation and healing received over the duration. Brutal Cleave, perform a wide sweeping attack, dealing damage to enemies in front of you. This ability shares a cooldown with Overpower, and hitting an enemy with a weapon combo finisher reduces its cooldown by 8 seconds. Gain 10 to 20 combat momentum based on the number of targets hit. Cataclysm. Deal heavy damage and apply shaken to all enemies in a large area in front of you. Shaken enemies have a 5% chance to trip when hit, and the effect is removed when triggered. This chance doubles when hit by riled targets. Crippling Blow. Deal physical damage and apply snare to target enemy for 6 seconds. Exert. Consume your combat momentum, rapidly gaining 20% increased attack and movement speed and immunity to disabling effects while active. Must have at least 20 combat momentum to activate, and the effects end when all combat momentum is fully depleted. Form of Celerity. While in this form, the caster receives 2% movement speed per 10 combat momentum, up to a maximum of 20%. Shifting form costs 20% of the current momentum and triggers cooldowns on all other combat forms. Form of Ferocity. While in this form, the caster receives a 2% attack speed per 10 combat momentum, up to a maximum of 20%. Form of Fluidity. While in this form, the caster receives 4% disable resistance chance per 10 combat momentum, up to 40%. Leap Strike. Leap to a target location and deal damage around you, snaring target hits for 3 seconds. Lethal Blow. Perform a powerful descending strike upon your target enemy, dealing additional physical damage based on the amount of missing health, up to 300% base damage. Lunging Assault. Spend 15 combat momentum to lunge in a direction a short distance and perform an upward swing upon arrival, dealing damage to enemies in front of you. You are immune to hard crowd control effects while performing this ability. Maim. Perform a powerful melee strike in a short forward cone, dealing physical damage to all targets hit, plus 100% additional damage to recently tripped targets. Overpower. Deal direct damage and apply shaken to your target enemy. This ability shares a cooldown with Brutal Cleave, and hitting an enemy with a weapon combo finish refreshes the cooldown of this ability. Rupture. Deal physical damage and apply a debuff to the target. While the debuff is active, the target acquires 5 wound stacks per second that they're moving. After 5 seconds, the target takes heavy damage plus additional damage for each stack of wound it has. Whirlwind. A channeled ability that deals physical damage to all enemies around the caster with each spin. The spin rate increases the longer it's channeled. The caster is immune to hard disabling effects while spinning. Activate this ability again to end channeling early. A lot of these abilities will be able to continue to be upgraded as you invest more skill points in them, and these upgrades can include increased damage, reduced resource costs, shortened cooldowns, and more. The fighter has its own unique class resource on top of mana called Combat Momentum that you may have heard of in some of the abilities. This resource, displayed under your mana bar, starts out as an empty bar. As you use certain abilities and weapon combos, you will build up that momentum. When you've earned enough, Combat Momentum will grant you unique stat bonuses based on the form you're in. These forms, as I mentioned before, are Form of Celerity, Ferocity, and Fluidity. Cleric, Barrier, sacrifice 25% of your maximum health to apply that much temporary health to a target ally for 10 seconds. Bless Weapon, imbue a target's weapon with Radiant Light, granting the Blessed Weapon effect. Weapon attacks deal additional Radiant Damage and apply Blessed Weapon Mana Region. Chains of Restraint, call forth a Spectral Chain in a target area that staggers enemies within or stuns enemies already under the Stagger effect. These behind an area that deals radiant damage each second over 8 seconds. Communal Restoration restores health to all party members in range equal to 150% healing. Condemn stuns a target enemy for 3 seconds. Consecrating Waves sends forth a cone of radiance dealing radiant damage to all enemies while healing the 10 nearest allies. Defiant Light 
heals a target ally for 50% of the maximum health over 10 seconds. If the target receives fatal damage during this time, the effect is consumed and prevents death, healing the target for 25% of their maximum health instead. Deliverance, a held ability, charge up healing energy that heals a target ally upon release, scaling in power the longer it is charged and based on the target's missing health percentage. Divine Flare Places an area heal on the ground that heals all targets within a few seconds. Total healing is split between all targets hit. Divine Infusion Consumes Divine Power to instantly complete the remaining cast time of any healing spell currently being cast. The amount of Divine Power consumed is proportional to the remaining cast time. Flash Cure Instantly heals a target ally. Healing Touch Heals a target ally in melee range for a large amount of health. Judgment Cast a heal on a target ally for a large amount of health. If cast on an enemy, it deals radiant damage instead and applies two stacks of burning. Mend instantly launches a healing projectile towards the target ally, restoring 100% healing health upon arrival. Resplendent Beam fires a beam of healing energy toward a target ally. Charging this spell allows the beam to bounce to up to five additional friendly targets. The amount of healing will decrease for each subsequent target. Resurrect. Resurrects a target ally with 25% of their max health and mana. Smite. Deals instant damage to a target enemy and applies a stack of burning. Soothing Glow. Applies a healing over time effect to target ally. Reapplying this effect extends the duration by the base duration value. And Wings of Salvation. Sprout Phoenix-like wings and leap to a target ally, granting a small amount of temporary health to that target on arrival. In combat, clerics aren't just tools to keep party members alive. Alive. They'll have a good amount of offensive abilities to help them deal damage when adventuring solo or leveling up, and while these archetypes won't be balanced for a 1v1 level of combat, Intrepid still wants clerics and tanks to be viable when out leveling by yourself without needing a party to hit that max level in a reasonable amount of time. Clerics also utilize a class resource called Divine Power. Displayed as a third resource bar below mana, Divine Power is gained when casting healing and radiant damage spells. This power is used to complete healing spells instantly while using the Divine Infusion ability mentioned earlier. The tank has Absorption Field, throw a rallying banner to a target location that spawns an Absorption Field upon impact. Allies within gain temporary health equal to 20% of your maximum health. Aegis creates a protective dome around the caster for 15 seconds, transferring 20% of all damage received by the targets within the area to the tank. Charge charges forward in the direction you're facing. Enemies in your path take 50% physical damage and become staggered. Fortify consumes all courage to reduce damage taken for 10 seconds, scaling up to 40% reduction based on a courage spent. Grapple, take aim and hurl a chained javelin at your target, damaging the first target it contacts and immediately pulling them to the caster. The target suffers a tapering snare for 3 seconds, but this ability cannot be used on bosses. Grit, enter a defensive stance reducing incoming physical damage by an additional 15% while outgoing damage is reduced by 25%. Threat generation is also increased by 50%. Inciting strikes. Slashes twice in an area, generating 400% threat. Indomitable spirit. Increases healing received in max health by 30% for 15 seconds. Protect. Intercepts attacks on a nearby ally, redirecting 30% of the damage to you. Reflect. Doubles your block mitigation, reflecting the next attack back to the attacker. Rush of Courage. Grants 100 courage when cast. Shake it off. Instantly restores 50% of damage taken in the past 4 seconds, capped at 30% max HP. Shield Assault. Lunges forward, dealing 125% physical damage and applying stagger to enemies in front of you. Slam. Deals 200% physical damage to targets in front of you, generating 300% threat. Taunt. Taunts the target, generating threat equal to twice your maximum health. Tremoring Bellow. Shouts to snare enemies, followed by a ground stomp that deals 150% physical damage. Wall. Summons a barrier at target location, blocking movement and projectiles. For the tank, they have a class resource called Courage. You can build up Courage through various abilities, and when you build it up, it increases your physical mitigation per point up to 10%, and you can also spend this Courage on various abilities as well to get different effects. And at last, the bird abilities include Anthem of Alacrity grants a target ally a 25% increase in their attack speed and casting speed for 10 seconds. Cathartic Melody gives nearby party members a 25% chance to heal themselves for 50% of the damage dealt. Cheerful Melody increases healing received by nearby party members by 15% and provides a light heal every 2 seconds. Chilling Lament deals ice damage to a target and applies a chilled effect, dealing bonus damage to frozen targets. 
Conflict increases the physical power of nearby party members by 10% for 30 seconds, generating a theme of tragedy. Dark Lullaby deals spirit damage to target, with the final hit stunning the target for 6 seconds if they are incapacitated. Epic Melody increases the movement speed of nearby party members by 20%. Flourish slides forward in aim direction, turning off collision and grants pep. Gambit transfers life to or from a target party member depending on who has lower health without reducing either player below 25% health. Get off the stage, knocks back enemies, dealing bludgeon damage and applying snare and disarm effects. Lovely Serenade heals a target ally every second with the final hit applying glee. Maddening Dance deals arcane damage and dispels one of the buffs on nearby enemies, applying humiliated to targets that are demoralized. Menacing Melody increases the damage multiplier of nearby party members by 10%. Mesmerizing Dance mesmerize all nearby enemies, applying incapacitated and stunned if they were already staggered. Nimble Dance grants nimble and pep while cleansing one debuff from allies. Pensive Melody restores mana to nearby party members with multiple instances of Melody not stacking. Quick Wit heals a target ally and applies glee or damages an enemy and applies demoralized. Saga consumes your current themes to create a story on the battlefield. The story told depends on the combination of themes used. The one we know so far is called Apocalypse, conjuring three themes of the tragedy to depict the fabled event. Enemies in front of you will be hit with 150% fire damage, burning and afflicting with Shaken. A lingering zone of flames will be left behind, dealing 30% fire damage each second for 8 seconds. Shielding Dance heals allies and applies a shield to targets as they enter the dance radius. You might have noticed in a few of these abilities, they have reference to different themes, such as the theme of mystery, the theme of comedy and the theme of tragedy. Themes are a unique class resource exclusive to the bard archetype, and each theme provides different buffs to the bards, such as tragedy increasing damage done by 5%. These themes can then be consumed to create powerful effects with the saga ability. Ashes of Creation's classes are shaping up pretty nice right now, and I truly believe that each archetype is heading in the right direction in its own development path, and while some, like the mage and ranger, might need a bit more work than say the cleric or the bard, Intrepid has proved in the last two months of pre-A2 testing that they are going to continue to respond and react to player feedback and make this the best MMO they possibly can.